What's going on guys? All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to wrap the rear spoiler on this Camaro. Uh, this, I believe this is a fifth gen Camaro. I could be wrong, just you know, correct me. Uh, but regardless, say it's about uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, uh, somewhere around there. Anyways, uh, it's before the newest generation. So I believe this comes on the uh, RS model, which this one is. So if you have a spoiler like this, or something similar, even on your own car, there's a lot of duckbill spoilers out there. This is gonna be how you're gonna go about wrapping something like that. Uh, so the film that we're using today is Vivid Satin Chrome Rusted Black. Now, it's a bit more forgiving as far as a, a chrome finish goes. Looks super nice. I'll, I'll show you guys the car later on once I'm all finished. But yeah, it looks super nice. So I'm gonna show you how to do this rear spoiler right here. And uh, we're, gonna go, we're gonna go for it. So we're gonna go beginning to end. Again, everything that I'm using is in the description below. So if you need tools and stuff like that, uh, ha have a look there. But I, I don't have the vinyl available there. Just go on uh, Vivid's website or you can email nav at ckrepstoronto.com if you wanna buy it for 20% off. So let's mist our rag with 70% isopropyl alcohol, not diluted, all right? It comes in the bottle just like this. We're gonna wipe off the exterior, all right? Once I wipe off the exterior, I'm going to get underneath all the edges. So you might ask me right now, why is the spoiler mounted to the trunk? Well, I took the spoiler off, obviously, to wrap the trunk, right? I've taken the spoiler off to wrap the trunk in one piece because it looks a lot nicer. A lot of, a lot of shops will seam it somewhere around here because there's only like a couple millimeters showing. I don't do that, I take it off, I put it back on. Now it's easier to wrap the spoiler while it's on the car because it's, it's, it's mounted. Having something that's mounted when you're pulling on the vinyl is very important. So, you know, trying to wrap a bumper off a car and stuff like that is very, very difficult. My, my rule of thumb is if you can't hold it in your hand really comfortably, then you're gonna wanna leave it on the car or mount it to the car to wrap it. Uh, door handles you can wrap off the car, very easy to hold in one hand for the most part. But again, everything else is pretty difficult. Even, even mirrors and mirror caps can be awkward and difficult. So what we're gonna do here is get underneath the edge. And another thing you might notice is that I've masked off the surrounding area. So I don't want to make, I want to make sure that I don't have any tape on the actual spoiler itself. This is, this is good quality uh, painter's tape. You're going to want to use something that's pretty decent. Otherwise it will leave adhesive behind. All right. So we don't want to go back in there afterwards and try to remove all this adhesive from the, from what's left from the tape. All right. On top of that, certain tapes can like tear off in small pieces and, and it's just not fun. So get something that's a decent, decent uh, quality tape. You should be looking at spending about six to eight bucks a roll, something like that. All right, so the spoiler's wiped down. What I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna move that. So what I'm also going to do is wipe off the surrounding area, all right? We wanna make sure that there's no dust floating around anywhere around the outside. Perfect. So, put that there. I have my piece of vinyl already cut. All right, it's a little bit longer than what I need, which is good, is what you need. And we're gonna start by peeling off the backing paper. So this is how I'll do it. So as you can see, We've got a lot of bunched up film right here. So even if I pull this flat, let's say if I pull this flat on the top, we're gonna have a ton of bunched up film down here, all right? This is, this is trouble, we don't, we don't want that to happen. So don't try and lay the top first and then lay the bottom. This is very similar to wrapping the trunk. So the other video that I have, I'll put a link up there in the top corner. The, for the trunk is very similar to how you're gonna do this spoiler, except on a much smaller scale and a little bit more contour to it. So basically what we wanna do is we wanna start on this body line right here. We're gonna stretch the film across this body line, all right? I'm just gonna get it into position. All right, so you can see how by pulling it across, it's starting to hug into here and it's wrapping itself over the top. Now we need to exaggerate that, right? So by exaggerating that, well, to, to exaggerate it, what we can do is we can add a bit of heat My heat gun is on its last leg, that's for sure. So I'm gonna heat over a large area, all right? 
And the mask, sorry, the masking tape is there to, I didn't finish my sentence when I was talking about it, so, or my thought. The masking there is taped so that we can cut all around, it, around it safely, and we can have the vinyl slide off comfortably so that it can wrap itself around the edge. So you generally want to try and get this done in one shot. We don't want to play around with it too much. So you can see that I'm pulling the vinyl out. I'm spreading it out and pulling it across. Could I have done this a little bit better? Possibly, but it's still okay. We want to make sure that we have no wrinkles on this top edge right here. Cool, so now you can see that it's wrapping itself around. All these wrinkles are going to be very easy to get out, so now they all run across. So now all we have to do is pull the vinyl downwards. Let's get more extension cord here. There we go. So let's get that out. It's okay. So I like to have the middle kind of cross itself. There we go. This way, the middle is pulling against itself in both directions. Now when we're heating, we're heating very evenly and very consistently, all right? We don't want to overheat any one area in particular. And you'll notice that I'm not heating really that close to my hands. That's because I don't want to add a lot of stretch to the very end of the vinyl. So I'm going to try and watch this as I put it down and try and make it a little bit better, a little bit nicer this time. Let's fix it up again. There we go. So this is the only wrinkle that I have to get out right now. That's, that comes across the top edge. So we're going to pull that down, all right? Pull that down, get it off the top edge. So once we've done that, I'm going to get all that. So this spoiler is actually super, very easy to take off. It's, uh, it's four, five, uh, two screws here, two screws here, and then two under the carpet. And there's no two-sided tape involved. So watch this right now. Really shrink that right into there. Okay. I need to hold it. I need to pull it down a little bit just to hold it so that it doesn't curl back on itself. But again, it's gonna start pulling itself under that edge, exactly what we want. Every time we wrap a car, it's all, we're, we're shrink wrapping the car. Basically every panel that we possibly can, we're gonna shrink wrap it. Now the top becomes very easy. And check that out. I heated it and then I put my squeegee on it and there's no glue lines, right? It's very, 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 very smooth finish. That's probably one of my favorite parts about Vivid is that their finishes are much smoother than anyone else's after the install. Than most, most brands. Let's not, let's, not, let's not go as far as say everyone. All right. So let's get that guy in there. So it's gonna get a little trickier over here. What I'm gonna do is bring the vinyl back a little bit. Heat it up again. So there should be no movement here because I didn't stretch here. Remember when I had my, where I was heating with my hands, I didn't stretch here. So there's no movement. The vinyl is not pulling back. Very important. Because we're not adding stretch on top of stretch. So again, I'm gonna watch my hands are over top. I'm gonna place it and spread everything out around the end. So what that's going to do is once I go to tuck the vinyl around, I go in and heat it, it's all gonna shrink in and underneath. So I pulled out this way and a bit this way. So let's finish up the bottom side right here. As far as this corner goes, I'm going to play around with this afterwards just so we can get it nice. So lifting the vinyl off of the tape allows you to really get a good tuck in here. You can see that the vinyl is actually 
pulling itself off the tape and gets and gets me right in there. That's all I really need. So let's do over here now. So this is the part where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm going to trim away a bit of vinyl because we have a lot. Don't need that much. So remember, this car has been repainted. So there will be some imperfections in some areas, but not all areas. I think the spoiler is like one of the only pieces also that hasn't been repainted. So let's check out this corner right here. So check this corner out. This is a very thick corner, I would say. So it's very tall, it's profile. It comes down, it comes down very far from top to bottom, right? So we need to actually get the vinyl around this corner so it turns out nice, right? That's, that's the difficult part. Because if I don't get it around and I shrink it, we're going to have wrinkles, see? If you run into a, a lot of trouble here, you can do a cut and fold technique. So that means just cut down one piece and then fold the two pieces over. You can, it's just not as nice, all right? So I'm going to bring the vinyl back slightly and then very delicately stretch it around the corner, all right? So I need that vinyl to come kind of down and around the bottom. It's underneath right now, right? It's underneath that bottom corner right there. So this is a very high profile corner, like I said. Look, no discoloration here on the very edge. I didn't want to stretch too much, just enough. That's another important part to look for. Now, we heat. You see, now it's grabbing the underside. Very, very, very important. That's the only way you're gonna have success doing something like that. So this one over here, same deal, but not quite as, uh, not quite as tall. So I'm just gonna bring the model out, stretch it around and then kind of let it shrink back around. What I need to do is I need to push it down first to get it into position before I add heat. If I add heat before I get the vinyl around the bottom, what's going to happen is the vinyl is just gonna pull back up. I want it to hug the bottom side. So you see how everything is there. I'm gonna go around here also, get it tucked in there a little bit more. This one's already shrunk, so I need to finish up this bit right here. There we go. So if this spoiler was a little bit thinner on the edges, it would be much, much, much easier. So I'm going to let that settle, just leave it there, let it chill, and we can move on to the rest. I'm going to heat it actually first, just make sure there's no movement. Again, by movement, I mean no pulling back. Beautiful. Let's move over here now. So same deal. Let's get all this sorted out. This side turned out a little bit nicer just because I took my time with it a little bit more. I mean, by nicer, I mean like there's not, there's not as many wrinkles to deal with. All right, a few up here. Again, I'll trim away some of this. It'll make my life easier afterwards. So for here, let's see what's happening. I'll pull back a bit. I didn't want to add any heat just yet because I'm not close enough to the edge. So I'm fine right now, I think, for here. I'll check out the bottom right here. Here we go again. 
a little bit of heat just to kind of get it around the rest of the way and then we're going to go for the corner afterwards if you think you're a pro and you think you can get the corner and everything all in one shot right now then go for it i like to do it in two stages to do it in two stages just simply because I'm getting close to the edge and I want to kind of fine tweak things. So let's make sure there's no crinkling going on. It's a word we came up with yesterday. Kinkle. Crinkle? Kinkle. Kinkle. No kinkling. All right, so you saw what I did there again. We've got it around. Let's do the other side here. And then let's get all this down. Tucked underneath a bit. In this situation right here, once you get to the corners, it's okay to use the, the more firm side of your squeegee. If you put any scuffs in it, it's very, it'll be very minor. And at least it won't be across a very large flat panel. Oh. Tennessee. No, sorry, not right now. If you're watching the video, I apologize. So we're almost getting this down right here. So over here I don't have to worry about, it's more so here. All right. So pull back slightly, I'm just gonna finish it now. I can bring it back down around the corner. It's already pulled back. I know that I'm not adding stretch on top of stretch. There, let's get it out. Perfect. So all these corners, the corners are good so far. Now what I want to do is trim out some of this excess right here so I can have better access to finish this off around this edge. This is why I put the tape down because you can see that if I'm uh, cut, I'm cutting kind of where the tape is. But I'm not actually even cutting on the car. I'm lifting the blade. I'm lifting the blade just in case kind of thing. The tape is there also for a just in case. So by lifting the vinyl and keeping the blade off the car, I'm reducing the chance and having the tape there, I'm reducing the chances of anything happening by quite a bit, right? trim away when I'm doing this I always trim away excess first and then I do another cut afterwards I just want to make sure everything's completely off of the tape like off of the actual uh, ex the paint surrounding the area or the wrap surrounding the area so that the vinyl can actually let it pull itself in when I go to heat it and shrink it cool so how are we looking hopefully we're looking good This is the easy part. So we can get the vinyl tucked in there a bit. Now if you want, you can remove your spoiler at this point and finish it off. I'm gonna leave it on. But that's because I'm comfortable doing it this way. And you should be comfortable too. It's not that it's not a really high risk. As long as we're making sure that we're getting the vinyl 
tucked underneath. And you can see that how the vinyl slides off the tape, right? It makes a massive, massive difference. Okay, I shrink right there. Boom. Love it. It's all about shrinking it. Now you might ask, do I have to post heat the corners? Yeah, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna cook them up a little bit. Uh, by cooking them up, I mean heat them up to the point where they're kind of melting themselves around the corner. Now we do have to be careful because we are dealing with plastic here, right? So we don't want to damage the plastic. So again, tuck it in, make sure we're solid. Eventually your squeegee is just gonna stop. And then when you go to cut afterwards, it's gonna be where your, where your blade stops also. So you're gonna be able to cut really nicely. One little wrinkle on the bottom here. Want it to look as best as it can. See, this is why I do a cut first and then leave myself a bit of vinyl to play around with afterwards so I can deal with any problems there, there might be. Because once I trim the vinyl away, it actually gives me a better view of what's happening around the panel. Cool. So let's go in there and just cook up the corners a bit. So you might want to use a glove. I don't use a glove. My hands are very, uh, not very sensitive to the heat anymore after doing this for seven years. So, but I'm going to cook that up pretty good, right? I'm going to make sure that that corner is pretty melted on there. I can feel it. So I'm using my thumb to feel the temperature. You now what you should be doing is you should be using a digital thermometer and a glove. That will prevent you from uh, burning your finger and it'll give you the right temperature. Because you want to bring that up to about 180, 190 Fahrenheit. And this heat gun, once I bring it up really close, it doesn't take long. Okay, let's go around to the other corners. See, I'm always triple and quadruple checking everything. You're gonna see that I, I hit these corners with my squeegee 10 times. I wanna make sure everything's good. I, got one, I have one time to cut and that's it. Once we cut, we're through. start on the other side as far as the cutting goes because it's probably cooled down a bit now still a little warm let me take our blade and run it on the underside okay I'm just running on the underside of the spoiler it's gonna be kind of hard for you to get a view of this which is fine Here, I'm gonna bring it back this way That's just the vinyl, that sound. There we go, that's more comfortable. So let's get it off around from the corner. There. Oh, just a small bit. There. So let's go around here. So what I'll do is my blade's very sharp. I just kind of push, okay? gentle with the cut. I'm trying to put myself in a good comfortable body position. There's a massive gap here which is perfect. This is really nice for sliding the blade through. Again this spoiler only sits one way because it's bolted down. There's only four six points where it bolts down. It 
So we want to bring we want to bring the camera over here. You can actually see really well how I come around the corner, right? Because there's a bit more of a space on this side, so I'm able to get my blade right in and around there. Same deal around here. I'm gonna bring my head down so I can have a look. the bottom so if you're wrapping your entire car I recommend wrapping the trunk first this will also prevent you from cutting into the paint by having an extra layer of wrap there just in case kind of thing my blade is always pointed up but maybe you as a beginner may not be uh, totally comfortable with the blade yet and so that'll give you added assurance we'll pull it off gently make sure we've cut through completely and i'm pulling out always okay now i'm going to go over it with heat because we don't know what changed now after i've cut it This is where I tend to use the uh, buffer side. Just because it's a little bit wider, it's a little bit easier, and it, it does a nice job of smoothing the edges out. It gets a lot of uh, coverage, basically. So remember, this film is about four times as thick as Avery, all right? So using this film will be a bit more challenging. If you're using Avery, it'll be a little bit easier. But the challenging part more so comes into play when you're doing the corners, all right? So it's hard to make a thick film look pretty around the corners. But taking the steps that I just took right there, uh, we'll give you a good idea on how to do it yourself. So let's remove the tape. And I'll give you guys a quick little walk around. Wrapping other spoilers. Again, there's a lot of spoilers on the market that are, that are like this. So... Even the Lexus that's beside us right now that I'm wrapping in the Midnight Sun has a spoiler just like this, but it's even smaller. So it's even easier to do. So let's bring it around and have a look. Have a look. Here, let's check it out. Right? Check it out all the way down. Couple, there's a glue line right there, you can see it. That is like the only glue line in all this, this entire piece. Right. Check it out underneath. That maybe makes a difference. That's it. So as far as uh, that goes, not too long of a process. I mean, it's about 30 minutes or so, give or take. Uh, but again, depends on the film that you're using. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you guys want to see some more videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll try and do a couple more videos on how to do uh, some other panels on this car. I, I'm sure you're very interested in the bumpers. And that's about it. Anyways, thank you for watching. Take care.